Kia ora, I'm Julie Gillespie, a PhD student in the Lincoln University Soil Science Department and I'm going to share with you some of my research. We are what we eat eats, but how well do we understand this? What we eat eats is soil, a powerful yet often invisible resource that doesn't get the care and attention it needs until things go drastically wrong. There is a disconnect between people and where their food comes from that causes significant challenges for soil and food security. These are complex issues that, try as we might, soil science alone is unable to address. Let's push the boundary of soil science. In an Aotearoa New Zealand context, we can do this by looking to opportunities that weave together mātauraka Māori, Māori knowledge and soil science. Mātauraka Māori exemplifies the interconnected complexities of the environment and the inherent connections between soil and people. But how do we weave these knowledges together? I've had the opportunity to carry out a case study at Pōhatu on Banks Peninsula. This case study has been driven by the questions of the Māori community with customary authority over the land, the mana whenua, regarding their past horticultural land use in the bay. What this looks like in my research is Mātauraka Māori providing the treasure map of where to look and what to look for, with the treasure, or taonga, being kumara. First, we have the name of the bay, Pōhatu, which refers to the additions of small, round gravel to the soil to warm it up and improve drainage. Second, there is a waiata, a song that directs growers to plant their kumara in November and December, as opposed to as early as August in more northern areas. And third, other practices like site selection to maximise sun exposure round out our map. Armed with said map and a spade, I got digging. The familiar crunching and grinding sound of steel against rock that normally makes a soil scientist groan had my heart skipping a beat. Bingo! I pulled out a handful of small, wave-smooth rocks that couldn't have got that high on a hill by any natural means. Pōhatu, the bay was living up to its name. As I dug down deeper, I uncovered dark, rich layers of soil that under the microscope showed microfossils of kumara that weren't present in other areas of the bay. What the soils are fertilised with had me scratching my head a bit. I looked at penguin poo and seaweed as accessible fertilisers, but the nutrients in these weren't really matching what I was finding in the soil. However, after talking with mana whenua, I'm also now looking at the ash of tekoka, cabbage trees, an important carbohydrate source. These trees were cooked to extract the sugars about the same time that kumara was planted and it's possible the ash was then used as fertiliser. There is so much that we as scientists can learn from opening our eyes and minds to different ways of knowing and understanding the environment. Weaving these knowledges paves the way for connecting and reconnecting people with where their food comes from, ensuring that we can feed the future. Kia ora. Thank you for watching some of my research.